from international to local, in one easy step. It's time for the big picture. First, we look at the story, and then we look at what they're doing with the story. Let's not worry about whether the story is true or not at this point. In my opinion, it would have been created, regardless, it's just so useful. Here's the green mask story. We discovered recently, that the planet is heating up fast. The ice caps are melting. Sea levels are rising. Biodiversity is threatened. There are too many people. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas contributing to the rise in temperature. Our use of oil and natural gas combined with development in the world's rural areas, is intensifying global warming or climate change. We have to change, and fast. Time is running out. Celebrities, officials, and all sane people agree that the planet is in danger, and we are the cause. Enter the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives, ICLEI, created in 1990 as a non-governmental organization to implement Agenda 21 locally around the world, ICLEI, pronounced ICLEI, brings the international into your town. According to its international website, ICLEI.org, members come from 100-plus different countries worldwide, and represent over 20% of the global population. Surprising that you've never heard of it, isn't it? It is a lobbying and policy consultant, designed to influence and change local governmental policies, related to all aspects of human life. You've noticed that ICLEI was founded before the 1992 Rio Earth Summit, where the formal precepts of Agenda 21 were introduced to the world. ICLEI sells trainings to governments, sets up climate adaptation programs, measures and monitors community greenhouse gas emissions and more, for a fee. Recently, ICLEI changed its name so that you wouldn't notice that it's an international organization. It's now called ICLEI, Local Governments for Sustainability. Here's what it says on ICLEI's own website. ICLEIUSA.org. ICLEI. Connecting leaders. Connect, innovate, accelerate, solve. The pace of global environmental change, the degradation of ecosystem services globally, and the overshoot of the human footprint on Earth, require an acceleration of local efforts. Even if all 1,100 plus local governments forming ICLEI's membership performed in the most advanced manner, and if we were to extrapolate these efforts into the future, those valiant efforts alone would not reach a sustainable level of resource consumption and pollution in communities, better known as the ecological footprint of cities. Experts confirm what all of us feel. We must act more rapidly and collaboratively and strive for more radical solutions. To accelerate action, ICLEI invites to the table leaders from a wide array of sectors who all have a stake in urban sustainability. Local governments, regional and national governments, international agencies, financing institutions, non-profits, academia and the business community. They are mayors and entrepreneurs, scientists and agency heads, ministers and CEOs, strategists and organizational leaders. They are innovators, decision makers, agenda setters and agents of change. That about covers it. Did you feel the sense of urgency, the panic, in that message? That is a tactic of UN Agenda 21. To keep you panicked, nervous, unfocused, anxious, and scattered. It's a fact that people don't think clearly when they are in panic mode. Confusion and information overload are a part of the Delphi technique. Radical solutions and accelerated action are required to survive. Notice that even if every local government uniquely performed in the most advanced manner into the future, that it would not be enough to reach a sustainable level. Feel that panic? Not buying it? Well then, let's pass some legislation to make you buy it. But first let's see what you're buying. Again, from ICLEIUSA.org. What ICLEI members receive. Clean Air and Climate Protection, or CACP, software and training. Tools, guidebooks, case studies, and other resources, including a library of local government sample ordinances, policies, resolutions, and other documents. Webinar trainings and regional workshops. State, regional, national and international peer networking opportunities. Technical and programmatic expertise and assistance from our regional staff regional, state, and federal funding updates, as well as federal and international policy analyses. Annual training and leadership events. Recognition and awards. Representation at international meetings. You're sharper already, aren't you? You spotted a library of local government sample ordinances, policies, resolutions, and tools. Sound familiar? And by the way, this can run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. The big one here is the clean air and climate protection software and training. That's the key. Once your city or county signs onto membership with ICLEI, paid for with your tax dollars, or becomes a climate resilient city and makes a commitment, the trap is clamped down on you. You are on the conveyor belt towards the buzzsaw. If you're really unlucky, one of your government officials will actually be sitting on an ICLEI board, representing your city or county in an international group. In Sonoma County, Supervisor Valerie Brown voted to give an $83,000 no-bid contract to ICLEI to measure greenhouse gases and prepare a protocol. 
That contract was awarded with no mention of the fact that Valerie Brown also sits on the National Board of ICLEI. I reported her to the California Fair Political Practices Commission for conflict of interest, but they declined to investigate. Here's what your counselor supervisors have committed to by accepting pressure from ICLEI. Milestone 1. Conduct a climate resiliency study. Milestone 2. Set preparedness goals. Milestone 3. Develop a climate preparedness plan. Milestone 4. Publish and implement preparedness plan. Milestone 5. Monitor and reevaluate resiliency. How does all of this fit together? You were in a Delphi meeting where you were told that multi-story housing must be built along bus or rail lines in your town, and that the current design of buildings and streets in your city center is all wrong. You were told that living the rural or suburban lifestyle is bad for the planet, and that you drive too much, eat too much, water your garden too much, use too much energy, and are destroying the planet with your selfish attitude. How do they know? Because your city conducted or is in the process of conducting a climate resiliency study to measure your greenhouse gas emissions. Chances are, you're somewhere in that milestone list, and the pressure is on. Your city or county's general plan has been changed to conform to UN Agenda 21. Remember though, that they want your buy-in so that they can say it's your plan. Why? Because it's easier when you're cooperative, and, after all, revolution is bad for business. Yes, this is a big business scheme. The biggest. The carrot for you, the mule, is that you'll be saving the planet from imminent disaster if you follow the new rules. And if you don't want to. The stick. Legislation. We'll look at legislation a bit later. First let's look a bit more closely at ICLEI. You've heard the term NGO, and know it means non-governmental organization. From that you naturally assume that it means non-profit, and that it applies to all non-profits. It's jargon. An NGO is a non-profit corporation that is independent from government control, as was defined in 1945 by the United Nations. Non-profit does not mean that the corporation doesn't make money, but that surplus money, after salaries and projects are paid, goes back into the corporation, and no tax is paid on the surplus. Chapter 27 of UN Agenda 21 focuses on the role of NGOs in implementing the agenda worldwide. NGOs are used to blur the line between government and the private sector. As governments become less able to maintain staff they will contract out for services with organizations, civil society organizations, which are not accountable to the people. ICLEI is such a group. It has special consultative status to the United Nations, a position held by only a handful of the millions of non-profit groups worldwide. Made up of government employees, non-profit environmental and transportation planning groups, and for-profit industries, ICLEI is making legislation and policy in accordance with international law that impacts you. ICLEI is the implementation arm of UN Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. ICLEI fragments into and influences so-called local groups that pressure your government for more regulations. Does it bother you that a non-governmental organization is made up of local governments? It should. It's a private group holding meetings that are not open to the public. ICLEI, a so-called non-governmental organization, is representing local governments in international UN climate conferences. States cannot have a foreign policy, that's in our constitution. No treaty, alliance, or confederation can be made by states and local entities. ICLEI is receiving federal funding. Federal internal revenue audits available online for tax years 2005 and 2006 show that ICLEI received over $1.7 million in 2005 and just over $1 million in 2006 from these four federal agencies. Commerce, Environmental Protection, International Development, and Agriculture. ICLEI's federal identification number is 04311-6623. The IRS Form 990 for tax year 2009 shows that ICLEI had $4,553,618, over $4.5 million, in income. That was for tax year 2009 alone from all sources reportable in the US. Remember that one of the sections of UN Agenda 21 was strengthening the role of major groups. You can check the membership list at ICLEIUSA.org to see if your municipality is a member, but it's likely that ICLEI has tentacles into your town, even if you don't see it on the list. The list is out of date online and doesn't show cool mayors, sustainable cities, or cool counties. Check those too. The STAR program is a new one with 10 pilot cities. Here's what ICLEI says about it. At ICLEI USA, we have found that educational and policy programs are not enough. Networks and best practices are not enough. Software tools and consulting are not enough. Transformation requires a carefully coordinated, linked-up system of political education, professional training and networking, technical support and civic education, and constant performance evaluation and feedback with each local government member over an extended time period. ICLEI has always focused on building that system. 
Star is designed to leverage each element of the system, and through our network of regional devices we are scaling up capacity to deliver, and, together with our members, institute change as a matter of public interest. Bickley USA is developing STAR with a number of key partners including the U.S. Green Building Council, the Center for American Progress, and the National League of Cities. In addition, Bickley USA has enlisted 160 volunteers representing 130 organizations, including 60 cities and 10 counties, state and federal agencies, non-profit organizations, national associations, universities, utilities, and private corporations. Greenhouse gas emissions are being tracked, measured, and logged by ICLE. Carbon offset trading, greenhouse gas emission goals, and legal statutes are designed and lobbied for by ICLE. Here's an excerpt from a New York Times article, May 23, 2011, across America and in Congress, the very existence of climate change continues to be challenged, especially by conservatives. The skeptics are supported by constituents wary of science and concerned about the economic impacts of stepped-up regulation. Yet even as the debate rages on, city and state planners are beginning to prepare. Melissa Stoltz, the climate director for ICLE USA, an association of local governments, said that many of the administrations she's dealing with are following a strategy of discreetly integrating preparedness into traditional planning efforts. There's a lot to refute there, but let's note that ICLE is called an association of local governments, people who question are mainly conservatives wary of science, and traditional planning is being stealthily changed. Your city or county has been committed to reducing your carbon dioxide or greenhouse gas emissions. It's likely that you've been committed by your local government in response to legislation passed by your state. You are now required to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. In our county, Sonoma County, Northern California, the government has committed to reducing our carbon dioxide output by 25 percent below 1990 levels by 2015. This is happening across the nation. Here's the obvious question. When were Sonoma County carbon dioxide emissions at 25 percent below 1990 levels? What year? You can't find that info. Anywhere. How many people were in the county at that time? Don't know since we don't know the year, but the county population has grown since 1990. So if we're talking about per capita reductions and we don't know what the population was at the time that we were supposedly at 25 percent below 1990, this goal will place us at a greater percentage than a reduction of 25 percent on a per capita basis. It's about control. The county doesn't even know what year it's trying to go back to. The county wasn't measuring greenhouse gases back in the 80s or the 70s. But their goals will put our farming, our industry, our energy usage, our businesses, our production, and our livelihoods back at some level in the past. That is just a number to some people, but we don't know what the consequences will be. What impact will this have on our food production? On our ability to work and continue to be financially independent? Will we be so restricted and regulated that we become totally dependent on the government for our food, housing, and income? Then what? Will we be living in smart growth slums? Traveling on buses routed only where we are permitted to go. Restricted to working in our transit villages. This is the result of policymakers trying to outdo one another, and agencies acting regionally to try and comply with state and federal mandates orchestrated by ICLE. You are required to comply. What happens if we don't meet their goals? Let's look at a sample inventory. 2009, Countywide GHG Emissions Inventory. Sonoma County's GHG emissions in 1990. 3.6 million metric tons carbon dioxide. Goal of 25% below the 1990 level. 2.7 million metric tons carbon dioxide. Sonoma County's GHG emissions in 2009. 4.28 million metric tons carbon dioxide. Source. Sonoma County Water Agency, sctainfo.org, slash data.html. If this were enforced in 2009 it would have required a 36.92% reduction in emissions. So what's next? If you can't meet their goals? Fines. And if you can't pay your fines? Tax liens. And if you can't pay your tax lien? Confiscation of property. Or will they do it by raising your energy costs while rationing you and establishing tiers where you will pay more if you use more until you're sitting in the cold? Did you know? The United Kingdom and much of the United States has committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions to 80 percent below 1990 levels by 2050. This was one of President Obama's campaign promises. What will that mean for you? Are you wondering if your mayor has signed on to the U.S. Conference of Mayors Climate Protection Agreement? Just type that into your search engine. Every single state in the United States has at least one city that has signed on to it, more than 1,050 cities. To see your city or county's goals for greenhouse gas reductions, go to your search engine and type in ICLE USA 2009 Annual Report. 
I searched for days but was unable to find a chart of the historical greenhouse gas emissions for the United States. I did find this chart that shows historical global carbon dioxide emissions from 1850 to 2004. It indicates that in around 1945, the emissions began to climb from 5,000 million metric tons to about 29,000 million metric tons in 2004. The year 1990 shows approximately 20,000 million metric tons. If you were to reduce that by 80%, the result would be 4,000 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. According to this chart, the last time that the world was at that level was 1934. At the 1992 Rio Earth Summit where the agenda for the 21st century was introduced, Chairman Maurice Strong said, Current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class, involving high meat intake, use of fossil fuels, appliances, home and workplace air conditioning, and suburban housing, are not sustainable. A shift is necessary which will require a vast strengthening of the multilateral system, including the United Nations. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.